The Russian invasion of Ukraine could soon enter a new phase with U.S. intelligence reports that Vladimir Putin is planning to annex the entire eastern Donbass region and multiple southern Ukrainian cities surrounding Crimea, the peninsula Putin successfully took back in 2014. This morning on Capitol Hill, Ukraine's first lady, Olena Zelensky, asked Congress to continue to stand with her country and fight Putin's oppression. We remain completely broken when our world is destroyed by a war. Tens of thousands of such worlds have been destroyed in Ukraine. The answer is right here in Washington, D.C. America, unfortunately, knows from its own experience what terrorist attacks are and has always sought to defeat terror. Help us to stop this terror against Ukrainians, and this will be our joint great victory. Joining me now, NBC's Ellison Barber in Kyiv and former U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, Bill Taylor. Ambassador Taylor, you were a fierce proponent of President Zelensky in the weeks leading up to the Russian invasion. He has met the moment. Now Ukraine's First Lady seems to have done the same in this speech to Congress. What do you make of her call? We need more help. And they do need more help, Chris. That's exactly right. I mean, she's right. Um, and the help is coming. I mean, to, to be fair, the administration, they've been providing heavy weapons that have enabled the Ukrainian military to begin to stop the Russian advance and indeed, maybe even to start a counteroffensive in the South. You mentioned the, the threats that the Russians have to try to annex parts of Ukraine. Um, and the Ukrainian military can push back so Mrs. Zelenska um, is, is exactly right. We need to provide that help. It's coming. It needs to come faster. So, Ellison, let's turn to what we heard from John Kirby at the White House yesterday. You were just miles away from Kherson a few days ago. What actions are Russian forces taking around there now? Yeah, I mean, we were about six miles away from the southern front line in a town that's called Zelenodolsk. It's one of the first stops that a lot of people who are fleeing Russian-occupied areas in the Kherson region make before they try and get further away from the front lines. When you're walking there, you hear all of the artillery shelling just going on across the river. Right now in this area, Ukrainian forces have reportedly at least partially destroyed a very key bridge there. There are two bridges that cross the river there, and it's an important uh, supply route, road, if you will, for Russian forces because they have two ways with those two uh, crossings on the river to get supplies to forces who are in areas that they occupy west of the river. And also in the event of a Ukrainian counteroffensive, they would use those bridges potentially to withdraw tro troops. Now at least one of them is severely or partially damaged, perhaps still usable according to some military analysis that we've seen, but it's a significant moment for Ukrainian forces, because again, if they were to launch some sort of counteroffensive, those two crossings that Russian forces are able to use right now, those are very vital for them. The, Ukra the U uh, UK's Ministry of Defense has said that it's possible that control of those crossings on the river could become a vital, a key factor in determining who controls that area and how the fighting in that area progresses. Meanwhile, in the east, fighting there is still ongoing. The regional governor of Luhansk, he says that most of the shelling they're seeing from Russian forces is centered along uh, the settlements that are on the border of Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, despite all of that shelling, we've sort of seen this back and forth between Ukrainian forces and Russian forces there. And Russian forces have so far not made really many, if any, significant gains in that area. But moving forward, particularly as you listen to what Russia's foreign minister said today about how their goals here have expanded beyond just the Donbass, that they're looking at trying to take more territories from Kherson, Zaporizhia, as well as other places. Uh, what's happening in the South is an incredibly important thing to watch. And that statement from the foreign minister is arguably one of the most direct comments signifying that Russia plans to try and annex more parts of southern Ukraine. Chris. Ambassador Taylor, obviously it is key to watch. So what do you make of these intelligence reports of Russian annexation and what will you be watching for? Of course, they do this. This is exactly what the Russians do. Uh, they invaded uh, Crimea in 2014 and they then annexed it. They say they had a, a referendum. It was a fake referendum, of course, and they won 97 percent, which tells you uh, what kind of 
what kind of free and fair referenda it was. They'll try to do the same thing here. And like in Crimea, no one, Chris, no, not one nation around the world, with the exception possibly of Belarus and maybe Syria and maybe North Korea, will recognize the Russian claim. No one will recognize this Russian claim. And so that will, it will signify nothing that what the uh, foreign minister has said.